This is my through dovetail jig that I made using a 3D printer to print these templates and then a section of T-Track um, to secure it to the, to the um, jig body. So with this jig I can cut through dovetails on stock up to about 16 inches wide, a little more. Um, the dovetails I cut are with a 8 degree uh, dovetail bit with a 11 16 inch cutting diameter. Um, and I use a 5 8 inch guide bushing uh, to guide the bit through the cut uh, following the template. The jig cuts through dovetails on one side, the taper side, uh, sorry, it cuts the pins for the through dovetails on the uh, taper side of the jig, and then it cuts the tails uh, on the other side of the jig. So one jig cuts both joints, and the pin template is centered on the slot for the tail template. So all you have to do to align your stock is align it with stops on the on either end. So the jig itself, um, just working from top to bottom, first are the templates. So the templates are made with a 3D printer. Uh, I drew the template design in Fusion 360 and then uh, printed it on a uh, uh, Creality Ender 3 clone of VoxLab uh, Aqua printer. And they have a um, drop-in uh, T-slot nut so that I can take them off without having to slide everything off of the joint and move things around, so that's pretty easy. And then they lock on, they slide uh, so that I can adjust the spacing, and then they just lock in with a screw and everything is solid. Um, underneath the templates, if you look at the jig body here, you'll see that the center of the jig, the spine, is a one inch thick um, uh, body. You could do this out of hardwood. I happen to glue together a couple uh, pieces of half inch Baltic birch plywood. And then on either face are these uh, particle board backing boards. And if you'll notice, the top part of each side is removable. There's a little screw protruding here that keeps it from sliding side to side when you're using the jig. But by being able to take it out, I can replace the part that gets cut into so that after I finish a project, if I want a fresh surface to support the stock, I can just put a new one in there. Um, other thing about the jig, so here you see the T-Track is mounted on short sections of T-Track at either end. And what that allows me to do is there are screws that I can reach through here when these templates are removed. And I can move that track back and forth in order to adjust the fit of the joint. So I've got this set up right now for a nice snug fit. And um, if I need to, I can adjust that if I want to introduce a little more play or um, make it tighter. So, uh, other thing about the jig that I already mentioned, the stops here for aligning your stock. And then the base of the jig is just a piece of plywood. It's got a backing board and then a um, 3 8 inch carriage bolt with a clamping bar on the front. And what that allows me to do is when this is all set up, is it's very easy to put my stock into place, align it, and then lock it down. So that's the jig. That's how I constructed it. Um, and I'll take you through how I set it up. So setting up the jig, like I said, pretty easy. I'm going to take, I have my stock marked. I always mark the outside of my boards with either tail or pin so I know which one I'm cutting. <clears throat> and I like to have a mark on the outside of the stock because that's always got to be facing me. So first thing I want to do is set up the position of the template. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this piece in place. And we'll clamp that down so it's snug. And this is where the adjustability of the jig and the ease of removing the templates comes in pretty handy. So I'm going to get a couple of these out of my way. And then you'll notice that on the end of the jig, I've got these half templates, and that's because I always cut a half pin on the end of my piece. So I wanted to be able to come in, and if I make that half pin a little wider, I can come in and ease into that um, shoulder and reduce tear out that way. So I'm going to move the other one here, and I'm going to shoot for just a little overlap there. So I'll put that one in place. And I want to set this up symmetrically, so I'm going to loosen the rest of these. And you see I can slide them back, but there's no slap in them when they're on there. 
it'll stop that way. And that's one of the benefits of making them with a 3D printer is it's easy to get everything really accurate. And then I'll loosen this one and I'll use my little square first to read this setting. Oops, try that again. And then I'll just take and use that to set the next one. So that's all good. And then now I'll just make sure that the other ones are spaced uh, kind of symmetrically. It doesn't It's not critical. You can measure these if you want. You could set them with a combination square, but for a piece of small, it's easy enough to eyeball them. So I'll actually set it up using the pin side of the template, but then I would make my first cut on the tail side. So, so doing that is simply a matter of the way. Take the jig out, and one thing you'll notice is that there are little holes here so that the pins can hit flush. I've got that at the other end as well. So I'm going to flip this in for N. Get that in place. Get my clamp out of the way. And again, cutting the tails, so that would be this board. So I'd start with that. Line it up. Snug up my clamp. And the nice thing about this is that once I have that clamp set, then I'm good. And here you'll notice that I can come in and clear out all of this stock, and I can start at the end so that I'm not going to go through and then potentially get tear out, a big piece of tear out, which I've experienced if you just had one of these on the end here. Um, so cut the tails. In order to set the height of the router, what I do is basically take my, I'm using a plunge router here. Uh, you're not going to use the plunge action. So I put a piece of the stock up and then release the bit and then I just push it down until it contacts the top of the stock and the jig. And that's going to give me the depth of cut that I need so that it will exactly equal the stock thickness. If I wanted to leave it a little bit proud, just put a piece of paper. looks like. So those are the tails. See it's a nice clean cut. Uh, and this is actually um, some very old redwood. Notice that nice fine grain there. Um, and I tend to get a lot of tear out with this. So uh, the jig allows me to, to really make a clean cut without a lot of tear out. So I would finish all of the tails and then once I'm done with that I change the dovetail bit for the straight bit. Uh, flip the jig around and then I proceed to cut the pins so um, I'll show you that after I get done cutting everything here. So I finished cutting the tails see what I've got the last one done here so tails are all cut next part is to cut the pins and for that I'll have to switch over to the from the dovetail bit to the straight bit and flip the template around. So I'll do that. Unplug the router.
same guide bushing, just changing the, the dovetail bit to the straight bit. So, um, next we'll flip it on the jig, so the clamp bar out of the way. And we just flip it end for end, that's really the only thing we need to do. Like I said, I've already set the um, position of the T-slot so that I get a good fit on these. And you really shouldn't have to do that unless you bump the jig um, or you go through some big humidity change or something like that. So everything else is set. Um, we're going to go ahead and mop the first pin in. And again, P stays out. So as I go from cut, I flip it right, like this. Go from end to end, rather. Uh, but we'll start with this one. Make sure everything is snug. Alright, next thing is to set the depth of cut. Since I changed router bits, I'll need to redo that. So we do that the same way. Put a piece of stock on there. Get in position. And then we just use the plunge to touch the surface of the stock. Lock that down. I'll put it there for a second. Alright, so we're ready to make our first cut. Again, I'm spinning the stock so that P is still out. Those. I think you can see here that I've got a nice clean shoulder cut both ways with the correct climb cut. So, see how it all goes together.
So there it is. You can see that that's a pretty good fitting joint. It's probably a little snugger than I wanted. I might go back and uh, wipe that a little bit. You do need to allow room for glue. But that's why I like dovetails right there without any glue. A uh, little snug fit, but I've got a good joint. Places where I goofed up a little bit and got a little tear out because I was being over aggressive. Uh, that'll fill with sawdust, but that's the uh, 3D printed dovetail jig.